What's going on? My name is Jared Burke, and if you're new to my channel, I talk about YouTube thumbnails part two. Now we're getting a little deeper into photo manipulation, but again, this is only gonna be a certain amount of layers. So I'm not gonna bore you on the details of who I am. I did that in my other video. I'm gonna get straight into this tutorial. Like the video, subscribe if you would like, but in the meantime, let's cook up these graphics. My overall goal is to help you design practically. So what I'm gonna do is take you through these six steps that's gonna help you achieve this look and this is a pretty beginner friendly tutorial. So if you don't have Photoshop experience, it's all good. I'm gonna help you out. The first step is to remove the background from the subject. So I got this image from pexels.com and we're gonna use this image as the main subject. He has a nice kind of like crazy look on his face. This will be good for this image. I'm all about being efficient. So what I'm gonna do here is, is I'm gonna let Photoshop's AI remove the background and then I'm gonna do any touch-ups that are needed. So typically when you open Photoshop, your image might be locked. So all we're gonna do is go over to this image. We're gonna just hit that lock button. Now, once we hit that lock button, what you're gonna see is in quick actions, you now have the remove background. So now I'm gonna do is click that and Photoshop's AI is gonna do the rest of the work. Just like that, the background is removed. As I can see here, there's some ghosting on the ear and a few different things that I'm gonna to have to touch up. So what I'm gonna do is, is go down here to the bottom right-hand corner we're just gonna click on new layer. So I'm gonna add a new layer in and I'm just gonna drag it below. And now that it's below, I'm just gonna add a darker background so I can see the difference in separation between the subject and the background. And this will also let me see if there's any ghosting on the hair. In order to do that, I'm just gonna hit shift delete on my keyboard. And we're gonna just leave it at foreground color and click okay. So now that we have black behind us, we can see that there's a little bit of ghosting going on and there's a few things that I can um, change on this image. For the simple stuff, all I'm gonna do is go over to this layer and I'm just gonna make sure I'm actually clicked on the mask thumbnail versus the actual layer. Now that we're on the thumbnail, let's go over here to the left hand side and we're gonna go to the brush tool. Now the brush tool is gonna allow us to actually add in and take out from this image. So if we wanna add in some things to this, see how the ear is kinda shadowed here a little bit? All we would need to do is scale our brush. And in order to scale our brush, we would just hold down control and option and we would scale back and forth. Once you find a good brush size, all you're gonna do is you're gonna start to paint over this. And as you see, if we paint with the black, it's gonna take away. But if we paint with the white brush, it's going to start adding back in the edges of this ear. Now this is gonna be the same for everything on this image. So I'm gonna go around here and I'm gonna clean it up just a little bit. And then we're gonna use a refine trick to get any other things that we need to get. I'll be right back. All right, so I've done most of the editing that I wanted to do on this image and it was mostly around the cheeks and different areas like that. And just a review, if I'm on the black brush, right? I'm gonna be able to take away from this image. Now if I hit Control Z, and if I go to the white brush by hitting the X, it's gonna add back into the image. Now that we have that, I just wanna take a little bit of ghosting off of the edge of him. So what I'm gonna do is go over to this layer and I'm just gonna double click it right there on the thumbnail. Now that we're double clicked on the thumbnail, I'm just gonna use a little trick in the output settings and that's decontaminate colors. So now that I click that, now you can see that the hair is now a little more bold and the edges have less shadowing. And before I click okay, I'm just gonna make sure that this new layer is on new layer with mask. So that's gonna pretty much duplicate what we've already done, but that's okay because you can always get rid of that or leave it as a hidden layer. Now I'm gonna click okay. And now you can see if I were to just turn this layer on that's underneath it, you're gonna see how the ghosting is now went away on the hair, but I'm still going to take one more step and refining the hair just a little bit. To do that, I'm just gonna go down to this bottom layer. That's layer one. I'm gonna double click it and we're just gonna adjust the colors a little bit. So I'm not gonna use white. We're just gonna kind of go into maybe this red type of color right here. Pink maybe. Now that we're on this pink layer, I'm just gonna go back up to this layer zero, which we're actually just gonna name as new subjects. Now that we're back on the subject, I'm just gonna use the brush tool again, size it to my liking, and I'm, I'm just gonna get rid of some of these like edges of the hair. 
I want it to be a bit more smooth. I don't care if it looks like super perfect because it's gonna be a small thumbnail and I just want it to be a bit more cleaner. So I'm gonna speed ramp through this and I'll be back in a second. Okay, I've done a little bit more work on this hair. It's very subjective. It pretty much can be whatever you want. I'm just focusing on more so it's gonna be a small image. So I'm not gonna focus on the edges of the hair that kind of were just a little bit of everywhere. Now that we have him ready, we're just gonna drag him over and scale him down just a little bit. And I wanna leave some of his shirt in the actual image. So I'm gonna scale him about right here. And we're gonna bring him as close to this side as possible. And then if we wanna move him back over later, we can. Next, it's time to create a background. So to do that, we're just gonna go down to the adjustment layers and we're gonna go to gradient fill. Once we're in gradient fill, we're just gonna change these two colors because we wanna make sure that there's a nice bold and kind of colorful background. So let's do that by clicking here. And then we're just gonna click on this color box. And then I'm gonna change this to a specific color because I want this kind of like yellow hue as the main light. So let's go with F9 B A11. And for the darker color, let's go with D9 for A zero B. And we're gonna hit enter. And as you see, you only see the orange color. So we're just gonna go over here and click the opacity stop. And we're just gonna drag this all the way up. And now we have this bold gradient. But what I wanna do is click okay. And then we'll go over here and click radial. That's gonna give us this kind of circular motion. And then I'm just gonna go down here to reverse. And now that we're in reverse, we can see that we have that bold orange fading into that yellow. And then we'll just click okay. Now I wanna actually get this light more onto the right hand side of this image. So what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna have to go into the gradient fill again because I can't click and move it. So I'll just double click on this gradient fill and then we're just gonna drag this radial box over just a little bit. Click okay. And now we're on to the next step. Next step we're gonna do is add in the phones. I got mine from Elements and Botto and that's where I get a lot of my mockups and different types of images that I might need to use. And the way they have it set up is just as easy as just opening the file and we're just gonna change the image that's gonna be right here and then we're gonna bring this over into my actual file. To do that, all I'm gonna do is double click on Put Your Designs here. Then I'm gonna bring in an image that I got from pexels.com size it to fit this screen and then I'm just going to hit command S or control S if you're on a PC and what that's going to do is it's going to save this PSB and once that's saved you can just X off of that and now you have a new image there now this image can be changed into anything you want over and over and all you have to do is make sure you save the PSB and go back into the main file now that we have that image where it is I'm going to look on the fall layer here and I'm gonna turn off this third phone. I just don't want three phones. I think it's a little too bulky. And then we're just gonna take this phone layer and we're gonna drag it over into the thumbnail. Now that we have this in the thumbnail, we're just gonna size it correctly and move on to the next step. And actually before we move on, I'm just gonna do a quick hack and add a shadow for the phones. To do that, I'm gonna move down one layer onto this gradient fill I'm then gonna go down to the bottom and add in a layer. And we're gonna go over here to the brush tool. And this is a hack that I use for making shadows. I'm just gonna scale my brush a little wider. I'm gonna right click and make sure it's a soft round brush. And then it's just a one click. And now we have this circular gradient that I can then hit Command T or Control T on my keyboard. Scale that up just a little bit. Let's turn it to the side. And there we go, we have a shadow underneath the phones. Let's change the opacity just a little bit, maybe down to 82. And now we're on to the next step. The next step after this is to bring in the hand. Sometimes I like to use hands, sometimes I don't. But for the purposes of what I talked about in part one, we're just gonna add in the hand so you can see how that works too. It's very simple, so let's do that now. Again, I went to Elements and Bottle to get this pointing finger and we're just gonna bring it into this file and kind of find somewhere that's reasonable for this to actually look like it's fitting with his body. First of all, let's drag this up to the top layer and then we're just gonna again, use this AI to do the work. But for this one, we're gonna go over here to your left hand side 
and we're just going to click the quick selection tool, but we're not going to try and drag it around and figure out the best spot for it. What we're going to do is just go to select subject and it'll select the subject for us. And again, remember, these don't have to be designed perfectly. They just have to look reasonable when you're scrolling and you're seeing them on the small mobile phone. So now we're just going to go down here and click this layer mask. And that's pretty much going to remove the background now that we had this subject selected. Then we're going to find something that looks reasonable for the size of his head versus the actual finger. It doesn't even have to be perfect because it can look more caricature like if you need to. And now I'm just going to fine tune this with the brush just like I did his face and I'll be right back. Before I move on to the next step, I'm going to do another few cheat shadows. So I'm just going to go down here, make a new layer. We're going to go back over here to the brush tool. We're going to size up accordingly. Make sure it's a soft round brush. And then we're just going to kind of paint behind him just a little bit. Doesn't have to be perfect because I'm going to show you in a second why that doesn't matter. Then we're just going to go to the erase tool, which you hit E on your keyboard and that'll bring that up. And for those who don't know, the erase brush is right here. If you don't see it here, you can always add it through the menu. Then we're just going to kind of change the brush size just a little bit and make sure it's not overcrowding this image. And last but not least, we're just going to bring this down to maybe an opacity of 66. And as you can see, that alone will kind of help separate the hand just a little bit. Now that I'm looking at this subjectively, I feel like the phone's a little too big. So I'm going to take this phone. So we're going to take this phone in the shadow. We're going to scale it down a little bit. We're going to move it over. And we're actually going to make the hand just a little bit bigger. And then we're going to get rid of some of the shadowing here on the actual finger since we're not actually connected. Again, this is subjective, so I'll let you figure out how you want to do it when you're kind of creating these. But this is just a way of showing layers and kind of getting the shadows and different things like that. Second to last step is to add in text. So to do that, we're just going to go over here to this text tool. Then we'll click on the screen and mine is already loaded up to Midnight Sands Pro. And then we'll add ultra. Let's just change that to white by double clicking on the text, clicking right here, and that'll change to white and then click OK. And then we can just center this pretty much however we want somewhere behind here. I like things to kind of overlap just a little bit. Now that we have the text in it, it's pretty much subjective how you want to finish it. How I typically finish mine to add that kind of sharp look to it is by grouping everything and then going to camera raw filter. So to do that, we're going to grab this gradient fill and then we're going to hit shift on our keyboard and then we're going to click the top layer. Once we have those highlighted, we're just going to right click and then convert to smart object. So that's going to put all the design in one little box and then the edits we make to this are going to affect the whole thing. Now we'll go up to file camera raw filter. In camera raw filter, you'll be able to see the whole composition, but we're just going to focus on how it's going to look from a sharpness and a crispness standpoint. First thing I'm going to do is go over here to basic and I'm going to change the texture by sliding it up. Change clarity by sliding it up. And dehaze by sliding it up just a little bit. And if I click this eye, you'll see how much that already changes image. Next, we're going to go to detail. In detail, I'm going to add more sharpening by moving this up. So that's going to sharpen it. But then I'm also going to add some noise reduction. So that's going to sharpen it, but it's also going to give it just a bit more smoothness. Now you can move this all the way up and get a lot smoother or move this up and get really, really crisp with that. But it's pretty much going to be the same. So I'll leave these a little bit lower. So that it's smooth yet sharp. And just like that, we're complete. It's a quick way to edit this, give it a nice crispness and sharpness. And this is a great starting point for building these different type of thumbnails that'll catch some attention. And just like that, that's another style of YouTube thumbnails that you can learn how to create. This one was short, sweet, and to the point. 
And again, this is what my channel is about. I'm gonna be teaching you how to design step-by-step -step in a way that's actually practical. If you found value in this video, make sure you like, subscribe, share, comment, all those good things. I'm gonna continue to give you the knowledge that I have. If you didn't see part one, I'll link it somewhere. And stay tuned, because I got a lot up my sleeve that's, I got a lot up my sleeve.